Thanks for tuning in to more NFL Draft Talk on the Arlads Football Network inside Arlads NFL Depth Charts with Ryan Dunleavy of the New York Post as we have our mock draft edition show. Ryan, I'm looking forward to it. Very much looking forward to it. I've never done anything quite like this. Oh, okay. It, it'll be a nice change. I, I'm 38 years old, Greg, and I just cut the grass for the first time in my life. Okay. So it'll be a nice, it'll be a nice change. Do something fun after cutting the grass. That's why I probably look a little like I, uh, a little Just got out of shower. Yeah, that's okay. I, I, I had to clean my garage today. It took, took me five hours. Oh then my I, god! Then I did. Well, we haven't cleaned out the garage since we moved in here three years ago. So it needed to be, you know, just before it got warm. Yeah. It was thirty nine degrees when I started the day. I went outside with a, with a, with my winter coat. It's now 77 degrees. Yeah. And I got the air conditioner on. See, that was part of the whole garage thing because I knew I had to get the air conditioner in, in, in my room before all this, this heat wave hit. And so, yeah, yeah I, I, was, I, I was this close from suspending the show today because I could have, I could have been <laughs> out in my bed right now and I, I would have been out like a light for the next four hours. But Well, let's give people what they want, a mock draft. Let's do it. And now we're not going to take too much time with the first two picks because it's Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson. Everybody knows that. We're going to go pretty much every other. There's a couple of circumstances that that changes, but pretty much we'll go every other, starting with San Francisco and Ryan Dunleavy. That means you are up and you have to make the call. Which quarterback will it be? And let's remind everybody here that we're trying to, Greg and I are trying to put ourselves in the GM and coach's shoes. This is not who I would pick, not who you would pick, but we're trying to give you guys the most realistic mock draft we can. Correct. And with that said, the 49ers at number three select <gasps> Mac Jones. An absolute open to criticism pick we'll be talking about one way or another as brilliant or bust of all time. Uh, to see him go number three overall ahead of where Tua went last year. This is all about system, 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 and coachability. Mac Jones is the exact quarterback that Kyle Shanahan favors. Uh, He sees him as like another Matt Ryan. And, you know, Matt Ryan was the number three pick however many years ago. So uh, it's Mac Jones for the 49ers. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Before I go, just want to remind everybody, here's the 2021 R-Lads Draft Guide. So uh, you can order this now at rlads.com. Check it out. It's awesome to have the guide before the draft, but it's uh, even more awesome to have it after the draft. Totally agree. So you you know which of your players are in the guide. Of course, everything is speculation right now with your favorite team. (laughs) But after the draft, and then then you're always interested in which – players who weren't drafted where they got signed things of that nature so usually you get about 95 percent of the players that are in this guide are either drafted or signed within a few days so check it out rlads.com all right i'm up and i'm a tough call here too greg i mean geez i wouldn't want to be you here for you taking a quarterback or you taking a weapon for another run from the falcons to me, I think it's going to be either they take a quarterback. I, I, I think there's a shot that they go with Kyle Pitts, but I think that they want to trade down. I really do. I think if there's a team that wants to move up into the spot, maybe the Eagles want their wide receiver. Maybe another team wants their quarterback. This is the spot. And it could be even the Cowboys or the Patriots. It could be some other crazy team we're not even thinking about. I think Atlanta wants to trade down, but if they stay here, uh, I- I'm going to go quarterback. And wow. now that Fields is left on the board, I'm going to go ahead and take Fields as the quarterback and say that the Falcons with their new regime wow. are going to take it the long way and say, hey, you know, we've got our quarterback, you know, Matt Ryan, we can figure out what to do with him next off season. Fields can sit back, be patient, learn from Matt Ryan for a year. And go from there. But like I said, I think Atlanta, I think there is a distinct possibility Atlanta is going to trade down from here. Wow. So you just gave me a curveball because I was not expecting Kyle Pitts to be there at five. Uh, I was expecting you. So that, let's make sure everybody knows. Greg and I have not exchanged picks. So we're trying to keep each other on our toes here by not, you know, we didn't pre-do this. 
We don't. He doesn't know who I'm picking at 27. He doesn't know. I'm, I don't know who he's picking at four. So uh, you just left Kyle Pitts for me. That will make me run down my clock if I'm the Bengals, thinking, oh, sh- are we making a mistake here? I got three options I'm really looking at. Pinay Sewell, got to protect Joe Burrow. We saw what happened to him last year. Jamar Chase, re- reignite the LSU connection. You know that's who Joe Burrow wants. Yep. Uh, and Kyle Pitts, who I think is the best non Trevor Lawrence player in this whole draft. Forget that he's a tight end. Call him a receiver if you want. I think he's the best player in the draft, not named Lawrence. I'm going to go Jamar Chase. I'm going to give my quarterback what he wants. I think that there's a lot of receivers in the second round. We hear that every year, but there's also a lot of offensive tackles high in the second round. So I'm taking Jamar Chase, and I'm putting a – I uh, obvious I'm taking a left tackle sign in front of my draft board. That's where I'm going in the second round if I'm the Bengals. But right now I'm getting the weapon, Jamar Chase. If you look at it from Cincinnati's point of view, they really can't lose because they can get right. Chase. They can get Pitts, like you said, or Sewell. And if, couple, if two of those guys are taken before they go, all right, we'll take the third. So yeah. they can't lose. They're going to get a good player. And and I no. and I'm kind of I'm I'm with you there. I mean I understand that if if look if it's not Chase if it's a, if it's a player that is has the talent of Chase but did not play with Burrow, I'm thinking Pitts. But I just think it's too important when you have that type of chemistry with a guy the way Burrow has with Chase and the talent Chase has. I just think you, and like you said, you know you do want to kind of give a present to your young quarterback and say here you go. Now, you two guys, go get us a, a, a Super Bowl the way you won a national championship. Now, are you throwing us a bunch of baloney, or are you going to do that exact same thing for Tua here at number six and give him Waddle or Smith? I am I considering that Chase is off the board. I am not taking a wide receiver here for the Dolphins. So you're not going to reconnect Tua with his guys? No, I college. won't. No. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I can, and look, by the way, Miami has, does have a second pick in this first round. And they, I, I think they could be within five, six picks with one of those two guys. I really do. I think it's possible. So if they want to go ahead and reunite him with one of those two guys later on, they could do they it. Have, but They have the ammo to trade up. Yes. and But I just have – look, Dolphins have got to improve that offensive line some more. They just have to. And I know Pitts is also here. I get that. Uh, it's a tough one because, you know, he, you have Austin Jackson at left tackle. Right tackle is Robert Hunt. He was a second-round pick. They really do like him. I think the obvious need for Miami is if they have to do something with the offensive line. But when you think, look at the Dolphins' offensive line, they're really – the weakness of the offensive line is actually a guard. It's not a tackle. I think they could live – with Robert Hunt at right tackle and Austin Jackson at left tackle. I really do. I don't think that's something that's – matter of fact, when they drafted those guys, that's what they drafted them for. So I I, I think that Sewell would still make a lot of sense here. Um, but I'll go, I'm going to go ahead and, and take Pitts. Wow. Okay. So you're going to give him a weapon, just not one of his weapons. Okay. Correct. I think that if you put in Pitts with Gasicki – who's already established himself as an up-and-coming tight end last year. He's going to get even better with better quarterback play. Even Smythe and Shaheen, that's a good tight end room. Now you're making it an elite tight end room with Pitts. And go ahead with that second pick in the first round. Use it on a wide receiver or um, maybe even one of the top interior linemen in the draft that could be available at that point. Well, I think you and I are... We're going pass catcher heavy here in the top 10, which is one way it could certainly play out. And, you know, then it could not play out. But I'm going to throw a dart right into your Miami trade up uh, for Smith or Waddle plan. And I'm going to take Smith right here at seven for the Lions. Uh, They lost Marvin Jones. They lost Kenny Galladay. They got to give. I mean, they're wasting money on Jared Goff if they're not even going to give him a puncher's chance. So I actually would have taken Pitts here if Pitts was available at seven. That's who I was kind of targeting. You take Pitts at six, so I'm going to take Devonta Smith, the Heisman winner, at seven for the Lions. You know, this isn't Matt Millen picking Car- Charles Rogers and Roy Williams and Mike Williams. We're done a long <laughs> time ago. Same. These aren't the same receivers. 
The Lions need a receiver. De- Devonta Smith is the guy. The only other player based on the board the way it is right now that I could see Detroit going with would be Sertain. And I know that okay. I know they I picked a cor- I know they went with a Cuda last year, but they still have some issues at corner. And I could see that being a nice future corner tandem, Sertain and Akuda. But you're right. They need a receiver. Makes sense. I, I thought about Parsons. Really? That high? Okay. I thought, I thought about it. Yeah, I get the feeling he's going to he, – he, and you talked about it, and I, and I, think, I think he's going to drop a little bit. I think he's going to go definitely outside the top ten. Okay. Definitely. All right. You got an eight. They got their quarterback. Are you going? Are you doing what some people have said they might do and take another quarterback with Sam Darnold? Well, there's only one left, and that's Lance. <laughs> so no, uh, I think I think I think what they're doing right now is smart. They're letting everybody know. Oh, of course we could take a quarterback. Oh, we haven't we haven't given him the the, the option yet, Darnold. We're serious about taking a quarterback here. I don't know about that. I, I think that you make that move. You, ma- you you trade some picks. I think you did that for a reason. And they're going to give Darnold a shot. And why not? I still think Darnold has a talent to be just as good as any of these quarterbacks that are getting drafted here. You know, it's it's a new quarterback for Carolina. So I will, I will look at some other uh, important needs. Uh, Sewell is definitely at the top of my list here as I'm looking here because forget Greg Little. Greg Little has been a bust so far. He can't stay healthy. There's no way they're going to rely on him as their left tackle. We don't know what's going on yet uh, with their uh, free agent situation as well um, with Russell Okung. Uh, So since he's not signed, I think Sewell makes a lot of sense. And just taking a look at it, unless it's Sertain, which I think Sertain would also be a really good pickup here. You know, they need another corner. So I think it's Sertain or Sewell. But I'm going to go ahead and say, Talent wise, I'll go with Sewell. I think Sewell is, is is a better prospect than Sertain, and he's already lasted till eight. So I'm going to go ahead and take Sewell. Yeah, that, that would be. I think Carolina would be dancing for uh, dancing for joy in the streets if Sewell is still there at eight. A lot of off. We haven't taken uh, one defensive player yet. No, and I think there's a very <laughs> good chance that a defensive player in the actual draft doesn't go in the top ten. Uh, I should shouldn't say that. I think there's a very good chance he doesn't. A defensive player doesn't go in the top nine. I think 10 could be one. But I don't want to make your pick four yet, 10. So uh, here's nine. And we're going to do it. Here's Send out the tweets now. Send out the teasers. Quarterback five. Denver, Trey Lance. I love it. Uh, I don't know that this pick will be Denver. But you and I aren't doing trades in this mock. So there's only two of us, you know, if we could get a group of eight or something next year, I would love to do it and try to make some trades. But I think pick nine here is Trey Lance, whether it's Denver, whether it's some, you know, New England trading up, pick nine, Denver, Trey Lance. We know they want a quarterback. Uh, they're talk. They may trade up from nine to get one. If, if, Atlanta, if Atlanta's willing to trade down from four, that could be a trade. But for now, we'll put in Trey Lance. Number nine to Denver. Yeah, the only quarterback. Re- the only th- reason why I think that they're either going to stay put or actually trade down is because of the the new GM. You know, I I think he he's going to want to uh, add as many prospects to this pool that he can. Um, I can see him sitting there, and why not? If he sits there, there is a chance, a good chance, he is going to get Lance or one of his quarterbacks. Yeah. So. Why trade up and do that? I just I don't see that that GM doing it. I just don't. So, um, and who knows? Maybe they trade down. That's still possible. But yeah, matter of fact, we did our seven round mock draft at our lads. That's available in the our lads guide. And I had Denver, and I took Trey Lance. So, all right. There you go. Next up is Dallas. So I get the Cowboys. Let me check out the our lads depth chart for the Cowboys. My top needs for the Cowboys. I've got offensive tackle. I have def- and then I got three guys on defense. So, well, three positions, defensive end, defensive tackle and cornerbacks. Uh, no way they're going defensive end or even defensive tackle this early. Wow. Patrick Sertain is still on the board. I'm taking Patrick Sertain. There you go. Just like I said, no, no defensive players in the first line, but I think 10 will be defense. There's only one other option, I think, uh, for, for, the, for the Cowboys, and that would be Rashawn Slater. 
And now you just gave me what I thought, what I think the Giants could have be pulling their hairs out on uh, on Thursday night, not in a bad way. In a like, they seem like both great options. We can't go wrong, but whenever we think we can't go wrong, we usually do go wrong. Uh, that's what the Giants' history has been. Do they take Jalen Waddle and give Daniel Jones another weapon? Uh, you know, they're kind of Tyree kill guy, the speed separation element. They're so desperately missing. Put him with uh, Kenny Galladay, Darius Slayton and Sterling Shepard. And all of a sudden, well, that's a yeah, really that's good. That's a lot of receivers. Yeah. Receivers. Yeah. That's a lot of really good receivers. Yeah. Um, and, and Saquon Barkley and Evan Ingram. And it's like, wow. And then, or Rashawn Slater, and you can maybe you put him at right tackle and bump out Matt Pear. Maybe you put him at guard and you bump out Will Hernandez or Shane Lemieux. I mean, this feels like I can't go wrong for the Giants. It feels that way. I'm going to take Rashawn Slater. I'm okay. going to take Rashawn Slater, make him a starting offensive lineman. Gettleman is, you know, a very uh, offensive line minded. I don't think they expect him to be there at 11. I think if he's there, that will change their plan of receiver. They'll say he's too good of value to pass up. And Rashawn Slater is the pick for me here in this situation. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I, I think, look, sure. Would it be awesome to have all those receivers? Of course so. Of course it would. But it just becomes almost overkill when there are other needs the team has. And they've got to, they've got to improve that offensive line. So I'm right there with you. I mean, a lot depends on what they think about, you know, the the, the player, Pert, who they took in the third round last year. Pert. So... We don't know. Yeah. I mean, what do you? What's your guess on what they feel about that kid? They like. Him. I, I mean, it's not a guess. It's an educated guess, I guess. An educated opinion from asking around. They like him, uh, you know. And they have Nate Solder, who they're hoping for this year at least could be the emergency plan if Pert's not ready. So, uh, I think that they'll go with Pert, and I think they might actually start Slater off at guard, and then if they need to move him to right tackle in year two or year three, they feel like they have a guy groomed ready to take over that job but i could see him starting at guard year one absolutely and that's why it makes a lot of sense if you were looking at a pure tackle who can't be moved inside that would be different but i might have taken waddle in yeah. that case so that's uh and 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 by the way if certain is still available do the giants take him? uh he certain yes i don't i don't uh, even jc horn i could see yeah even jc horn i could see them taking uh Yes, but I, I just think when push comes to shove, they don't think Slater will be there. You you We left Slater there, so they got to take it. Okay. Next up are uh, the third straight NFC East team. Uh, Eagles need some help along the defensive line. They need a cornerback, so that's definitely a possibility. Uh, and they also need a wide receiver. We know that they took one last year in Rager. He just didn't turn out all that well. He had some injuries uh, and so forth. So, really, it's up to you got Waddle. Right now would be at the top of the list at wide receiver. Uh, and then forget the defensive line. Again, I think it's too early when you're taking a look at what's still on the board. Uh, and then it's cornerback. You have Horn. So it's Horn and Waddle. To me, that is the combo here. Um, I am going to – I'm looking at the depth chart here. And, boy, they really do need a corner, don't they? Their cornerback situation is pretty bad. Uh, I, I tell you what, I, I, yeah, it is. They both are. Uh, I think though that you can get receivers a little bit. I think the prospects are better in the second round and the third round. I think there's a bigger drop off at corner. So I'll go ahead and take, uh, the corner here. I'll take, uh, I'll take horn. All right. Who, well, by the way, is Joe Horn's son. Yeah, and you just threw a loop into my Chargers plan because I did not expect J.C. Horn to be gone by 13. That was my Chargers plan. Uh, so now this is what you don't want as a GM. Oh, scramble papers around. No, that oh, won't be happening. Gonna pick, trade, <laughs> see if anybody wants to trade down. See if anybody wants to trade down. No. Uh, is, is Rashawn Slater there? No, he was just picked by the Giants. Oh, damn it. Like, this is, what you, this is exactly what you don't want if you are – a uh, NFL GM. So Chargers have a lot of needs, I'm, though. They they're, they could go in a lot of directions. They have a lot of needs. What do you have listed for you as your top Chargers needs? Oh, they I definitely have, need I'm, an. They need offensive line help. 
I mean, definitely. For sure. Uh, That's where I'm going. I'm going with Elijah Vera Tucker, the guard from USC. Uh, A lot of people think, yeah, he played left tackle at USC last year, but he's kind of projected as a, not a Quentin Nelson, because I think Quentin Nelson's on a Hall of Fame track, but like as a Brandon Sheriff, immediate, you know, multi-year Pro Bowl guard. So that's where I'm going to go for the charge. I wanted J.C. Horn, but... I'll settle for Elijah Tucker. Yeah, when you're taking a look, like I said, because, the well, look, there are three other cornerbacks that I think are worthy of first-round selections. You got Samwell, Newsom, and Farley. Yeah. Farley, the injury situation, who knows? Every team is going to have a different take on that. Yeah. And yeah. Newsom had such a great pro day that you just, you know, okay, pro day to – is that something that you kind of get – sometimes you get overblown by pro days and you really shouldn't. Yeah. All right, uh, Chargers are in the books. I'm next with the Minnesota Vikings. So let me scroll down on our lads' depth charts to the Vikings. And my top needs with the Vikings are wide receiver. Look, they, they're fine with Jefferson and Thielen. They need a third. They kind of skated by last year with what they had. But they, at, at some point, not in the first round, I don't think, but it's possible that they would go wide receiver and add that guy. But I don't think that's because they, they need defense. They also need a left tackle. Um you have Darasaw would probably be the top guy that's left on the board. So offensively, I think they're looking at Darasaw. Uh, they also need a guard, but they can wait till later. On defense, it's going to be about pass rush. They need some more pass rushers. And they also need a free safety. I know they signed a Xavier Woods from Dallas, but they can't possibly be resting on Xavier Woods as uh, a guy that they're going to count on. Um, but that's not where they're going to go here. I think the top prospect left on the board is probably Darasaw. Uh, I think they have to take that guy. You know, you have Brian O'Neill there at right tackle. Um, they lost uh, Rife. So uh, uh, Darasaw is the pick here. Uh, and it'll, of course, be their left tackle. All right. I'm going to end the slide here. I think if it wasn't for some maturity concerns, I think Micah Parsons is clearly the best defensive player in this draft and ahead of Patrick. Wow. Sebastian. I think he's a game changer. I just, teams are worried. I, I talk to teams. They're worried about, you know, not so much that he's going to get arrested, but just that he's going to, like, not take it all so seriously or, you know, just that his work ethic, immaturity stuff. Uh, I had a say to me recently that he was reminding me of Odell Beckham. Well, Odell Beckham's a great player. But it's always something with Odell. There's always a headache. There's always a video. There's always a tweet. Um, not everybody wants to deal with that. But I think the New England culture is the place that just like, hey, buddy, that's not going to fly here. Go out there, play football, make plays, uh, win. I think it's the right kind of place to, you know, he, he'll know going in. Look, I, got, I don't have a choice. I can't, I can't do nonsense here. So New England, I think, is a trade-up candidate for a quarterback. There's no quarterback here worth taking. So Michael Parsons, the best overall player. Bill, Par- Bill Belichick loves a BPA, if I've ever seen somebody who loves a BPA. And uh, best player available is Michael Parsons. Yeah, and this would be one of those situations where if the Patriots got a hold of Parsons, the league would be going, you got to be kidding me. Come on. <laughs> Bill Belichick got a hold of Michael Parsons, that talented kid. Yeah, because we've seen the Patriots. Look, we just talked about it with the Bucks. You know, the Bucks winning a championship with like five or six guys that you just wouldn't want on your team. Yeah, but it's just it doesn't matter if you do have the right supporting cast, and 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 obviously Tampa Bay had it, obviously the Patriots have it, so yeah, that would be uh, that would be a pick I would not want to see as a Jet fan. All right, next up is Arizona, and Arizona, uh, they're gonna at some point need a tight end, but obviously this is way too early. Uh, they also have got to get some more pass rushing, and uh, just taking a look here. Uh, it's still too early in my mind uh, to go with a pass rusher, so that's not what they're going to do as far as a uh, a three four pass rusher. Um, then you have cornerback and strong safety. Peterson's gone. They brought in Butler, uh, but that other spot is just a big hole with Robert Alford listed opposite uh, Malcolm Butler. Uh, so cornerback is definitely at the top. Uh, strong safety is also something that they're going to have to figure out. Morig wouldn't be the worst idea. Uh, that kid's uh, got a lot of talent. But I'll say they go cornerback here, 
And interesting. Which way will they go? I will... I'm going to go ahead, and I guess it's just a kind of a flip of the coin, but I'll, I'll take Samuel here, Asante Samuel, for, for Arizona. All right. Third coin wow, that is. Board. Oh, wow. Wow, that seems early. Uh, but you know what? They love to do that. They love to do that. You know, the, so. the major thing with Arizona is actually when, when they're at this point is going to so be. Overdo some Ed Farley. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, uh, again, I, I think at this point it can go, it can go in any direction. Um, yeah. and, and taking, and actually all three of those guys are more, they're not the depressed kind of guys, all three of them. So it's not like one's a press guy, one's his own guy. So they're all kind of the same boat. All right. Uh, next up is Las Vegas, Ryan. So you just threw a major curveball into this draft, and the Raiders love to throw major curveballs, like Clelling Farrell at four, or uh, who was it, Damon Arnett at like 19 last year. Um, yeah, so true. that's you just throw you just threw a curveball. Make sure it's, make sure it's a make sure it's a power team because we know how they like to play. <laughs> the, they like to go after those blue chip like Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson players. Yeah. <laughs> so now, for me, at the Raiders, I'm thinking it's either an offensive tackle or a def- or somebody in the front seven. I'm going to go. This would have been a perfect spot for Parsons if I let him go from 15. But in trying to be, in t- you know, I'm trying to honor the integrity of the mock, Greg, right? Like, I'm not, I don't pass on him for the Patriots because I think he'd look good with the Raiders trying to honor the integrity so i took parsons i backed myself into a corner with the raiders and i'm gonna go with the next best linebacker who i also think is a really good playmaker and probably the opposite of parsons in that he has zero character questions i mean he is people say he'll be a team leader day one so jeremiah alusu koromoa to the raiders yeah he is like the epitome of the next gen hybrid type player you know, if you ever, if, if you know what a hybrid is, he's it. So, uh, yeah. and he's definitely the top guy in this draft for that position, which is a very important position. And <laughs> and just look at what happened yeah. to Carolina last year uh, with Chin. I mean, Chin had a Side- tremendous season. All right. Sideline to sideline. Okay. Next up is, where are we? We're at Miami again. All right, back uh, to the Dolphins. I, and looky yeah. here. Look who's still available, baby, at wide receiver. Just as just as we had hoped. Waddles the wow. pick, baby. <laughs> wow. Talk about a slide. Whoa. How about that? Well, see, here's the thing. We all know there's going to be a couple of players that always slide. You never know wow. who it's going to be, what the guy is, what the position is. But they'll slide because you're always going to get players that nobody thinks of. Like I just put Samuel in there. There's other players that are going to get drafted in the top 12, 13. Oh, really? How'd that guy get in there? So, so somebody's going to slip. I'm not sure if it's going to be Waddle, but it, it worked out perfectly for uh, for me wow. taking the Dolphins' top two picks. Wow, how about that? When when I took Devonta Smith at seven, I said, he's out of his mind. There is no way he's getting Jalen Waddle at 18. <laughs> wow. Look how, look how that fell. Waddle and Pitts. Imagine, imagine that. Jeez, all right. They're not going to get Waddle and Pitts, but imagine if they huh? did. What kind of a celebration that would be in Miami? Oh, gosh. Jesus. I think he just won the draft for the, the Dolphins. Dolphins. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, and I'm sure as a Jets oh, I love fan, it. I'm sure yeah. you like that. You <laughs> Help the Dolphins the out, sure. All right, so the Washington uh, football team is next. Whew. That's a, there's a team I think could trade up for a quarterback. There's a team that I think could do a lot of different things, right? I mean, like, they went to the playoffs last year, but does anybody really feel like they're good? Like, do, oh, you, no. can, do you come away thinking, like, oh, that's a good no. team? Like, uh, I will say the pick is Trevin Jenkins, the uh, offensive tackle from Oklahoma State. Okay. Uh, I think he's really moved up some boards from moving around, talking around the NFL before the, 
you know, pro day combine where he was, probably in the 30s or 40s to now probably in the mid 20s. I'm going to reach a little bit for him at Washington and I'm going to take him. And I think my next pick, the Colts would have liked it. They'll probably be kicking me, but I'm going to take Trevin Jenkins for the Redskins, for Washington at 19. Yeah, Washington's going to be interesting because if you look at it, uh, the offensive line. You know, I, yeah, they, I mean, they could they could improve their offensive line, but they could also stand pat with their offensive line if they wanted to. Um, but like you yeah. said, at quarterback, that's going to be – are they going to go into next year with Ryan Fitzpatrick? Heineke is the number two. Is that going to be the look of the Washington football team next year? No. It could be. Could be. I wonder how much they actually believe that Heineke deserves a shot in case Fitzpatrick doesn't, you know, that's going to yeah. tell us everything. They're probably going to add a quarterback at some point. You know, that's going to be the team that's going to add like Trask or one of those guys. Okay. Next up yep. is Chicago. Speaking of quarterback, old quarterback situations, the bears are in the same boat as Washington with an old quarterback there, Andy Dalton. But, you know, they can't go quarterback here, or at least I don't think they're going to. All right, so, and this is another team that could trade up, you know, and they have a situation, a GM and head coach. These guys really need to win. So that's, that's, that's why I don't, I don't see them wanting to be in, oh, let's trade up and get a quarterback. And there's no way they could do that after they went up and got Trubisky last time and it failed. So I think they're they're set with Andy Dalton as the quarterback. They try to build around him, get have a winning season, get to the postseason, get some good graces back that we know what we're doing, and then they can go and get their young quarterback the next year. Uh, get a little good graces because both guys could be gone if they don't make the postseason next year. All right. So top needs besides quarterback, uh, definitely wide receiver. Look, they can look. Mooney looked a little bit better. Miller looked a little bit better, but. Robbins is still a one man show there. Uh, but wide receiver for sure. Right tackle. Definitely. I think that's definitely a spot. Matter of fact, uh, taking a look at what's available, you have Mayfield would be my top right tackle guy right now. And then you have wide receiver. Uh, you have maybe Bateman would be my top wide receiver prospect. So I'm going to lean towards Mayfield because it's a big need for them. Defensively, they need a linebacker. Uh, so more pass rush. Mac and, and Quinn, okay, but they don't have a whole lot past that. Uh, and it wasn't like they got a whole lot out of those guys last year statistically, you know, sack-wise. So I, I still could still – but right and right now looking at it, again, I think for a 3-4 team, I'm not seeing it. I'm just not. I think 4-3 teams, you know, Quiddy Pay is sliding down. And it's going to be a good bargain. But um, I don't see it for a 3-4 team. And cornerbacks, Yes. They need a cornerback here. They have Desmond Trufant lined up opposite Jalen Johnson after losing Fuller. So that means Newsom uh, would be there. So it's going to be between Newsom and Mayfield. That's the way I'm going to look here. Newsom and Mayfield. And I am going to go with, I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Mayfield. I think with Andy Dalton as your quarterback, you better make sure he's not running around back there. Is that OT? Is that offensive tackle five? Yes, it is. No, it's four. Because Vera Tucker is like a guard. Yeah, guard. So five. No, but we have Sewell, Slater, Darius. Oh no, five. Yeah, that's right. Because you picked uh, uh, what's five his name? Offensive tackles. Yeah, five offensive tackles and a guard in the first twenty picks, and zero pass rusher. Who was that? Who was the? Uh, oh, Jenkins. That was the one. You, okay. That was the last five, pick, five right? Jenkins. Tackles. Yep. Got it. Yep. Five. Five, off, five. five offensive tackles and a guard in the first 20 picks. Wow. All right. Let's end the drought. I think the Colts will be very pissed at us if this is how the draft plays out because they are in the left tackle bolt. They they want one. They're hoping it's Darisaw. They're hoping it's uh, Jenkins. We took all those guys, so I think they go to the opposite end of the trenches and they pick a pass rusher and I'm going to go Jalen Phillips a okay. uh, guy who, you know, could is pro if he didn't have the injury history he had, he's probably a top 12 prospect in this draft on pure talent, but he retired from football at one point concussions. He ends up transferring from UCLA to Miami revives his career. 
uh, looks incredibly good, but I think it's three concussions he's reportedly had. So he's, you know, one or two away from not playing. This could be a three year pick. Uh, but if he's, if he's as good as advertised, it's a home run. Again, they want offensive tackle. If the board shakes out like this, I could see them trading down. Uh, Ballard loves to trade down. He's hit a lot of home runs. He has the equity, the capital to take a swing for the fences, and that's what Jalen Phillips is. I think if I think the Colts would be ecstatic, though, if this was left on the board, that they could get their pick as one of the top four, three edge rushers. I think that's what they also need. I get the feeling the Colts, at where they are right now, I I see them more as we're going to wind up signing one of the remaining top free agents that are left out there. I can see them doing it. Who that is, maybe it's Eric Fisher. I don't know. But I just see them more – maybe – look, and obviously they're waiting to see if they can get one of these kids first. Yeah. But I don't know if they're going to get one of them that, that, that unless there's a guy – again, like may, who knows? Maybe they like Jenkins a lot, like you said. Maybe he's on the board when they're there. I don't know. But I just get the feeling that they're, they're that one team that's going to end up signing a left tackle. All right. Let's go with next up. Tennessee. So you have back-to-back picks here, Ryan. And the Tennessee Titans are definitely, and of course, they made the move where they gave up their tight end as a free agency, their number two wide receiver to free agency. Bud Dupree was basically the beneficiary of that cash. They needed some pass rush help. They went out and got it. Uh, I'm going to stop another slide here. I stopped the Micah Parsons slide. I took the, I stopped the pass rusher slide. I'm, I'm like a slide. I'm like an amusement park, just stopping slides. All okay. Left, left and right. I'm going to take Caleb Farley for the Titans at 22. All right. uh, there you go. Again, just like Parsons, just like Jalen Phillips, a guy who on talent alone is a top 12 player sure. in this draft. Before he had back surgery in March, he was, you know, going to run a four, three something 40 and he was going to crush his pro day and he was going to challenge Patrick Sertan to be the cornerback one off the board to the Cowboys, to the Broncos. So he slides to late for mid to late first round and the Titans get him. And I think if I know you, that crosses off somebody for 23 at the Jets because I know the Jets need a corner. So I'm going to take Caleb Farley at 22. Yeah, I, I think this pretty much comes down to the Jets to cornerback and running back. And I think they'll be happy with either. Uh, I just think that when you're deciding on the fifth cornerback or the number one running back, you have to go running back. Well, is it, is it fifth or is it fourth? How many of corners have we taken? We've taken four. Four. Uh, four. Yeah. So Newsom's <laughs> the only guy that's really warranted in the first round that's left. So Correct. I just think that he's just way too talented. I'm sorry. Uh, as a Jet fan, I just think you have to, you have to get Etienne on this team. I just think you have to. Wow. I think if you you put yourself in a situation, and, and and I talked to a few a few Jet fans on on YouTube, and here's the deal: you're not going to win a Super Bowl next year. It's not about that. It's going to take a couple of years to build your franchise. So what you do is you've got your quarterback. Hopefully, you've got your two receivers in Davis and Mims. Now go get your running back. Now go get your stud running back, and then you could also fill out some of the other pieces in this draft, and then next year, next off season. But you can you got an opportunity to get a stud running back, a guy that's going to be around for years. I think you have to take advantage of that. So I'll go with Travis Etienne, the first running back off the board for the Jets. Wow. There you go. All right. You're up next. So, I would have considered Travis Etienne. That's, that's why this is fun, right? Because one pick, you know, that's why it's fun to do this with two people. Because when you're sitting at home doing a mock by yourself, you know, for the paper, or for online, like, you just kind of, like, you can't argue, like, oh, well, I'm going to pick Etienne at 24, so I'm not going to pick him at 23. Like, <laughs> yeah. you can't do that when you're playing. Yeah. You can't do that when you're playing with somebody else. And I would have taken him at 23. I don't know if I could take Najee Harris. I don't know if I could take Najee Harris at 24. I don't. Oh, I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, you see, Again, because I think there's a drop. I think there is. I know a lot. Of, there are a lot of people who like Javonta Williams. I'm not saying he ain't going to be a good player, but I just think there's a drop when you go from Etienne to Harris to Williams. I think you got two studs, and then you got Javonta Williams. That's how I feel. 
That's interesting. Yeah. All right. So I, Pittsburgh uh, is is another team that needs a running back. Yeah, and I think I'm going to do it. I I don't I can't should see it's it, what's eating at me here is I don't see a world where two running backs go back to back in the first round. Uh, I think the you know people would you know the NFL would implode, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. Uh, I uh, I think they'll probably end up with running back one because I don't agree with your Jets pick at 23, but I'm not making your Jets pick at 23. That's why this is one. I think they'll probably have their choice of Etienne or Harris, but I don't, so I'm going to take Harris. All right. Uh, and t- and Pittsburgh, it, it, isn't it interesting when you take a look at Pittsburgh's roster and, and, and there are, you wouldn't think it. Based on this was an undefeated team at one point last year, but there are a ton of needs on this team. They've, they they have yeah. holes that they have to fill, and they I need mean, a center. They need an offensive yeah. tackle. They need more off, a more pass rush help. They need a corner. They need a nickelback. They need a running yeah. back. They need a quarterback. Yeah, I mean they, they have so many needs for a, for a yeah. winning franchise like the Steelers. I thought I thought about Landon Dickerson, but. I mean, he's a risk too. I mean, coming off surgery and whatnot. So that's, that's a little not, high. Like yeah. I, said, I think, I think they'll have both running backs available. So I, I gave them one. If they don't, well, I don't think they'll take their second running back. So if their first running back's off the board, I don't think they'll just take the second one to draft for need. Then they could go offensive line. They could go Newsom. But because I think they'll have both available, I took Harris. Yeah, I mean, and look, like you're saying about the Jets and Etienne, it is quite possible. That based on the system they're running, that San Fr- d- 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 you know, the, not the San Francisco, but but just the system that they're going to run, that yeah. they're one of those f- offenses that believes we we just ne- need to have five stable of running backs. We don't need to have yeah. a stud. We just need to have four or five really good guys that we can draft in the third round, the fourth round. We can get Tevin Coleman in free agency. We got P Ryan on the run. That's fine. We're fine with that. That's not what we're going to win with. And it's possible, you know. It is yeah. if you take a look at it with what this with what this kid is the new offensive coordinator has seen recently. Uh, you know, Atlanta, yeah, they had a couple of guys, but they didn't. It wasn't a running back team. It was a it was a passing team. And San Francisco had a stable of running backs. They didn't have a stud. I mean, they had guys that were yeah. undrafted, late round guys. So I can see the Jets doing the same thing. I just, I just, I just, I hope they don't. And I just think. You know, but but I think that could happen. They could pick a cornerback and then go with the running back a lot later. Okay, All right. and they also could take an offensive lineman. All right. Uh, next up is Jacksonville, and this is the second pick for the Jags, but the first on our show. So this is Urban Meyer, and uh, you can definitely be sure that Urban Meyer is going to draft speed on his team, uh, whenever that is going to be. Now we know the quarterback is done. I think this team is switching to a 3-4 based on the coordinator that comes over from Baltimore. Uh, they even uh, signed Jihad Ward from Baltimore. So I, I, Josh Allen can fit anywhere. We talked about Chase on being a better fit in a 3-4 defense. So if that's the case, they can definitely look for another uh, edge rusher uh, in this pick. But um, here's another... Look, if they can get a, a speedy running back and he's available, maybe Etienne or Harris is available, they can go there. Uh, but they're both off the board. They can go offensive line. They're going to go tight end later. It's interesting because as I'm going through this, I think a lot of the guys that they would want to pick it are, are not really on the board. So I'm going to take a hard look, and I'm going to go probably defense. And I am going to take... Let's see. I will take a look. I don't really think they need to take a corner at this spot. Uh, so I'm not going to go there. Uh, they could definitely, again, go at linebacker. You know, that kid Collins, I'm really high on, but they have Schobert, and I don't know where they fit in miles, uh, but Collins can go anywhere. Uh, the other pass rushes are all 4-3 guys. Again, I think they're going with 3-4. Barmore is a defensive tackle. Maybe they, they, they figure maybe he could fit in their new system. Uh, More rig is a guy that I would also consider, matter of fact. Maybe this is a good spot for him. Um, yeah, this, is, uh, this isn't easy. Um, I tell you what, I will – I mean, a, a jar a – jar, Make a trade? Make a trade. You want to trade up here? You want – With huh? who? 
You want to take the Browns? I'll take the Jaguars. You want to do that? Sure. We can switch. I, I, I can go in any <laughs> direction, so I'm fine. All right. What, so is we'll, there a guy know, that you I'll, want to get? Is I'll that why? Yeah, I'll kick you a third or fourth round pick and uh, to move up one spot here, throw a trade. I know we said we weren't going to do trades, but I feel I have much more conviction about the Jaguars at 25 than I do about the Browns at 26. So we make a little trade here and you take the Browns at 26. Sounds good to me. And I will take Kadarius Tony for the Jaguars. Okay. I, you said speed. You said Gainesville. You say Urban Meyer. You say wide receiver yeah. for Trevor Lawrence. To me, it makes so much sense. Uh, I think that's you know that's one of my locks of the first round. Is if Kadarius Tony is there at twenty five, he's the Jaguars. Yeah, player. I was actually thinking more along the lines of second round going after Rondell Moore, uh, something yep. like that. But hey. He's this big though. I know. That's scary. I know. He's this. He's five seven. I know. I mean, I mean, Jesus. But that's okay. I, I agree with that. Uh, that, that I think yeah. that's a perfect situation for for the Jags because they have to yeah. get speed at wide receiver. Don't be fooled yeah. by Colin Johnson and the Visca Chenault last year. Those guys aren't fast, so they need. No, speed. Visca Chenault can play, but he's more of a 50-50 balls guy than a fast yeah. guy. Yeah, it sounded like you were struggling yeah. there, so I picked up the phone. Picked up the phone. I said, "Hey, da, 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 throw you a fourth round pick, move up one spot, give me Kadarius Tony." Okay. Now you're stuck with the Browns because I didn't know what to do with the Browns. All right, so the Browns here. I have a defensive end. They, they need more pass rushers, so I think this is perfect for them. I know they got Clowney, but that ain't enough. So pass rush is perfect. I think they could use a hybrid, and a, I think they need some back seven. DB help, like a hybrid type guy. They got Lamar Jackson out there. You know, maybe this Morrig kid would be a, a really good pickup or even uh, uh, Collins we talked about. But uh, I just think with the fact that we've got so many of these defensive ends at 4-3 sitting there perfectly, I'm going to go ahead and take Quiddy Pay. I think Quiddy Pay could go as high as like 15 to the Giants if they trade down with the Patriots. I think that's a possibility. We know Judge and Belichick are tight. Uh, Patriots are looking to move up for a Justin Fields or a Trey Lance at 11. Uh, Giants at 15. I think what the Giants really want to do, I should have said this when I made the pick at 11, was I think they really want to trade down into the mid to low teens and take a pass rusher because I think they know, like everybody else, that 11 is too early for a pass rusher. We let pass rushers fall all the way to 21. That won't happen yeah. because we weren't making that because we weren't making trades, but pa some pass rusher will go in the top twenty, maybe one, maybe multiple. Uh, so Quiddy Pay is an absolute steal for the Browns at twenty six. I just hesitated to do it for the reason you said he's not a starter. I mean, he's you know, they're going to start Clowney and you know and uh, Garrett, and you know obviously you rotate pass rushers. He could play sixty five percent of the and snaps, he can, and he can line up anywhere on the defensive yeah. line too. That's why he's a really good pick for a team like Cleveland, because so or any team that's, that runs a four man front. Yeah, that's why I hesitated to do it. But you're up again with Baltimore now. That's right. And this is the first of two picks coming up for Baltimore after their trade to uh to give up Brown to the Chiefs. Yeah. Which was a weird trade. We should spend a minute yeah. on that. Let's spend a minute on that. The weird trade, I mean the Ravens who the Chiefs are their roadblock to the Super Bowl. Gave the Chiefs, and I know they got plenty back, but they they helped the Chiefs fix their number one need. They made the Chiefs better, which they were already better than you. Very strange trade. You know, it's one of those where you just feel like you're doing the best for your own team. You know, that's the way I got to look at it from Baltimore's sake. And and I know that, that, that there were some other draft picks that switched teams, but Baltimore did look the, the chiefs. Basically what if they've done this off season is what you figured they would do. And that's, they've spent all of their resources so far in the offensive line and that's it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and we can understand why they would make this deal, but Baltimore. Okay. And look, they need a right tackle now because as I was talking several times with Tony Lombardi, who covers the Ravens, he's like, no way. Tyree Phillips is is a right tackle. No way. So he's he, he says he's got to they got they got to kick him in. He doesn't believe he's gonna he'd be able to work out at right tackle. So uh, you look at Carmen and Redunce 
as the two guys that are the highest on my board at tackle for Baltimore. They can use a slot receiver with speed. Now that comes in, you've got maybe Marshall or Moore. Uh, those two guys that are still on the board, you know, they could use a receiver here as well, which is kind of, you know, it's interesting. I, but again, I think Baltimore has got that pick coming up in a little while. And I'd rather, I think I can get more wide receivers in a little while than I can get this tackle situation. Um, and they could also use some pass rushers, but again, they run a three, four Ojolari. I don't think, I, you know, I could see him going to the Ravens. I can, but I'm not going to go that route. They also need some DB help, uh, specifically, you know, another corner, maybe another safety too. You have pick 31 too, so you can kind of exactly. play here. And That's what I'm thinking. Hope that I skip. That's why I'm looking and I'm going, you know, I'm going to, I have to get a tackle for sure. And I want to make sure I get the guy I want. So I'll go with, I'll go with Redunce. I'll take Dylan Redunce. The tackle from okay. uh, what was it, North Dakota State. I don't have him as a first rounder in my, in my you know mocks or top hundred. I have him as like a mid second rounder. Yeah, okay. exactly. I mean, so Carmen's the other guy. Yeah. Who, oh, Carmen. yeah, okay. he would be the other guy, but I'll, I'll take with Cos- No, Cos- he's not high on Cosme, huh? From Texas. Uh, let me see. Let me check it out him. while you. Who's next, by the way? I'm up. With the Saints, I believe, at 27. So the Saints. Boy, that's a team. It's the another Saints. team that, that has a lot of, uh, a, a, a whole lot. to. They, they 20, lost a lot. Me, Saints at 28. And I'm taking, again, this is, a, this is a theme of this draft, is me just taking, uh, ending guys who shouldn't be sliding. Unless I'm crazy, this is one of those, like, uh, did I forget to mark him off? Greg Newsom is still available, yeah. correct? Yes. Give me Greg Newsom and that Saints. I, uh, you can hear the applause in the Saints draft room right now that they get Greg Newsom at 28. I thought he would have been gone long before this. Fixes a problem. Chauncey Gardner Johnson is no longer a starter. You plug in Greg Newsom and away you go there. Yeah, the Saints, another team that can use, they could use a receiver. They could use a uh, more defensive lineman. They lost two defensive tackles to free agency, yeah. so they need a defensive tackle. Maybe even what's his name would have been a good. Let's say if there was no top corner left, Barmore, they would probably really like to take in this spot. Correct. Yes, but I'm. I I thought about him actually. Honestly, they he was probably my second choice. I was not thinking receiver. I was thinking Barmore or Newsom. Newsom. I have. I actually on my notes have Barmore written down, but I did not think Newsom would be there. So that's I'm taking best player available. And, and just so you know, uh, just going by our lads, uh, they have. Uh, they do have Carmen uh, ranked ahead of Redunes, uh, but Cosby they don't have until the third or fourth round. Wow, that's okay. Arlads. Okay, yeah, all right. Arlads is a very respectable publication. Yeah. It's interesting. Gay was taken in the second round last year, and Hunt was taken in the second round last year, and those guys weren't. They were like fourth, fifth round guys from Arlads. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it happens. Happens all the time. That's what we say. You yeah. never know. Guys are going to get overdrafted or sometimes they'll get it'll only take one GM and one scout. Okay. Packers are up and we know the Packers need a wide receiver. That's for sure. Uh, I don't, I think they could use some offensive line depth, but I think at this point they could probably pass on that. If, if, uh, Cause I think wide receiver looks a little bit more pleasing here, but also on defense, the Packers could use some more pass rushers. Uh, Ojolari is on the board. They can use an inside linebacker. Collins might be a really good pick here. I think I'm falling in love with Collins here. Uh, the corners are off the board. So uh, so I think it's going to be either wide receiver, which uh, would be Marshall or Bateman or Moore or Collins. But I think the Packers go after Collins. Get your wide receiver later on. You can still do that. Um, Collins is going to ring your neck, Greg. What's that? (laughs) Aaron Rodgers is going to ring your neck. That's all right, Aaron. You'll get your wide receiver in the second round. Yeah, you've been hearing that for two. I know. But tell you the truth, these guys that are on the board, they're pretty much second round guys anyway. You know, Bateman's got some talent. I, I, he's, I think he's the top guy that's left on the list. Bateman. Who do you think is the top guy left on the list at wide receiver? Bateman, by I think Bateman's wide receiver four. I I would have taken Tony. Uh, I took Tony for the Jaguars because I think it's the perfect 
uh, matchup, sure. coach and yeah. player, but I and area and whatnot. I just you're asking me. I think Bateman's wide receiver four, and I won't be surprised if Bateman has a Justin Jefferson is a high ceiling, but a Justin Jefferson like. Sure where he actually is the number, he actually has the most receiving yards, maybe other than Jamar Chase as a rookie. That would not surprise me at all. I'm very high on Bateman. Okay, uh, next up is Buffalo. So you took, I took, you took Collins. David Collins. Yep. Okay. And I think Collins, if he, if Collins even lasts this long, I think whoever gets him, that's a, they should be really pleased. All right. Yeah. Buffalo is next. And then I, you're, this is your last pick. I got the last two. So the Buffalo Bills. You can't let Bateman go out of the first round, can you? You're going to let him go out of the first round? Who's our lad's top I didn't top take a wide receiver with Baltimore yet. Uh, who's our lad's top corner? Left on the board? Yep. Let's see. That's really where I want to go for Buffalo, but I don't like any of these options. The, la- the next guy that's on the board after the ones would be Marco Wilson. He is a second-round grade, third-round grade out of Florida. Ooh. That's your top corner. That's left, and then you have Aaron Robinson. Robinson is not Ooh. too far off from Wilson's um, ratings wise. They both run in the four three. They're both very fast. But Ooh. Robinson's more of a slot guy than uh, Marco Wilson, I think. Yeah, I do not like any of these options. Eric here. Stokes Ooh. would be after that. Oh God, Eric Stokes. Yeah, um, he's also a second, third round. Kelvin guy. Joseph. Kelvin Joseph, I think I think it's just too early. Well, Buffalo also needs a running back. They need yeah, a tight I know, end. But, but, but I'm not ta- I'm not taking oh, Javante Williams. I know, wait, I know who I'm would not be good. Fryer. I huh? know who would be good here. Uh, no, don't yeah, I, I, it's my it pick. Would, I'm struggling. All right, I won't say unless, it unless you want to make another trade. You want to bail? You want to bear the bear? Uh, bail out the bills and give me one of the last two picks. You want to I do, can that? do that? Let me just I, double check, but I'm pretty sure he would fit really well here with Baltimore. Yes, I think this guy. Yes, he has to be the guy. Okay, all right. So switch. I'll, let's make. Let's throw, throw another mid round trade here. You get you get thirty. How about I get thirty two? You want me to? Want, can I take Tampa? Sure. Okay, so you take thirty. Bail me out. Uh, the clock was running down. There was like one of those Viking situations where they're about to get skipped on the clock uh-huh. and then no one knows what the hell is happening. Yep. Bail me out. Take my Bills pick. I'll take a third round or a fourth round pick to move down to 32. Christian Barmore. Yeah, that's who I thought about. Yep. yep. No way he he gets out of the first round. Oh, no way. Way too talented. Yeah. Yep. I like him. Uh, you know, I definitely – look, Ed Oliver had a nice season, but – I'm not so sure Ed Oliver is. Look, he's definitely. It was interesting when Ed Oliver had a better uh, 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 rookie season than Quinn and Williams. There were some Jet yeah. fans that were like, "Oh, we could have had Oliver. We could have had Oliver." And then after last year, no Jet fan wants Ed Oliver over Quinn and Williams. Now, you have to be patient <laughs> with these kids. Sometimes right. you know they 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 progress a little bit you know differently. So anyway, yeah. I think Barmore. Um, you know, they and they could also use a pass rusher too, no question. You know, Rousseau away has got is a freak athlete from Penn State. I I think this could be a situation where one of the Etienne or uh, oh yeah or not Harris. Harris goes. Yeah. I think that's a if if they're third that's why I think if you think the Jets need a running back like you did I think you have to take him at 23 because I don't. You can't count on either of those two kids being there at 34. Oh yeah, Buffalo so, is not letting either one of those guys pass. So uh, I I think one of those would be the pick at 30 because I think one will still one will be gone, one will be there. But you and I, I backed myself into their corner with the Steelers because I was trying to be in te- you know the integrity of the draft. So okay. I didn't have. So Barmore is your pick. So you're up again at 31, and then I'll close the house at 30. All right, I'm going to go with uh, Bateman for Baltimore. So I'm taking my wide receiver for uh, for Baltimore. Very, very good. Pick. Bateman yeah. is there, and that leaves the Tampa Bay Bucks, who have got. Well, why don't you tell tell, tell people a little bit about Bateman while I do some pay, while I do some Bucks. 
okay. research here. Since I well, was Bateman can play. He's definitely a guy that could play the slot or outside. So I think that's what works. Yeah. You know, I was thinking that Rondell Moore, remember I said this before, I think he might fit good with Baltimore. They can use a slot guy. Moore is definitely a slot guy. But Bateman can go either way. So I, I th- And he's clearly a better prospect than Rondell Moore just because of size and Moore's got the injury deal. But uh, you're taking a look at a guy who just taking a look at some of the things that were said about him in the Arlads guide. Uh, he wrote, he rewrote the Minnesota record book, first team, all big 10, third team, all American. Uh, he was one of those guys who like opted out then opted back in and opted out again, like a very strange, but he had a huge 19, right? 19 was the year he blew up. Yes, correct. Because last year the quarterback situation and the whole team just had, they lost too much talent. Uh, it yeah. just was not the same team last year, and I'm sure a lot of it had to do not just with talent leaving, but also it was just a crazy year as we know. But yes, uh, yeah. Bateman, who played with Tyler Johnson, with the Bucks, who you're going over right now, that was a hell of a one-two duo, Tyler Johnson and Bateman. That's why Minnesota was as good as they were in 2019. Yeah. But yeah, Bateman runs a four four three. He's a six one guy, so he definitely makes a lot more sense over Rondell Moore in that spot. All right, so that brings me to the Bucks, who are like the what? Well, I think they're the first Super Bowl champion in the free agency era to ever bring back all twenty two starters on offense Crazy. and defense. That is unbelievable. So they literally need nothing. Yeah, like, they could do best anything, player right? available. They could. They could trade out. They could do – this is true best player available, yep. right? And so when I look at it, I say, you know, there are guys that just can't slip out of the first round. How does Greg Rousseau slip out of the first round? How does Trayvon Morig slip out of the first round? How does um, Jameen Davis slip out of the first round? How does – how does you know, is Ojalari still yeah. there? How does he slip out of the first round? There, you know, that's gonna happen. I mean, there's too many guys. I think that it's unbelievable. It happens every year, right? We we peg 40 guys as first round picks. Like suddenly there's yep. gonna be four guys. There's there can only be 32. No matter any, no matter how many ways you slice the cap, there's too there's too many guys. You know, when I look at Tampa Bay, so, I think about if they're in that spot, unless they really really like a guy, and they can't trade out of it. I think that if they had to just okay, here we are. We got everybody's even on our board. I would I would think that they would go offensive line because with Tom Brady there, man, you can't just think that. You know, when Kappa went down and they had that Stinny guy come in for a few games, they were very fortunate yeah. to get by with that because they had another injury in the offensive line that would have been disaster. So I think if Tampa Bay is in that spot, I think they have to bring in some more offensive linemen. Well, that's what you would have done maybe at 32. You and I made a trade, and I'm taking Aziz Ojalari. Uh, That's Russian. Jason Jason Pierre-Paul is getting up there. I think Ojalari is a perfect complement to the newly re-signed Shaq Barrett. Uh, You know, I think that's just kind of a theory that a lot of GMs I know go by is, like, when it's best player available, pick a pass rusher. And so that I think Ojalari is a guy who could go – go you know in the upper to lower half upper half of the second half of the first round if that makes sense so like in that 16 to 22 range makes a lot of sense for ojalari so to see him slip to 32 i can't let him get out of the first round all right guys by the way that are still left and you named a few offensively you got marshall probably the top receiver offensive guy carmen dickerson you mentioned him in offensive line but we we got rid of so many of those guys early uh, the kid from Penn State, Rousseau, we talked about him. Uh, and Morig would probably be one of the top, definitely the top defensive back that, that I don't I don't know if he makes it out of the first round, but he could. No. You never know. It's not a deep safety draft. So somebody who needs a safety oh, yeah. could grab him. And look, let's call this a lot of teams regret passing on Xavier McKinney and especially Antoine Winfield last year in the back half of the first round. So Mo Riggs, the best of the best, clearly at safety. So, you know, I, I yeah, you're right. I, I don't know that I could see, you know, Cleveland passing on him or, or Green Bay passing on him, but you never know. Yeah, and he's a guy like the, the, the three guys that 
like when I watched games last year that I just stuck out. I was like, wow. Like the last year and a half, one was Mo Rig, the other was Collins, and the other was Osai, the linebacker from Texas, okay. which just looked like a monster every time I watched him play in big games. And I thought that he might be a first round guy, but it turned out that's not the case. He's probably more of a second to third round guy. But those are just guys that I just I have a I have a really good feeling for that. I don't care where they go. They're going to be good players in the NFL. Yeah. All right. And by the way, Kellen Mond, Pen- uh, uh, our lads, and, and I'm not surprised by it, uh, has Mond going pretty far down. And if you look at it, where do they have him? They got Mond going in the fourth round. Now, I spoke to J.T. O'Sullivan. I think I mentioned this to you the other day, and I've heard this before. There are some people who really like Helmont. And I yeah. just, you know there's going to be a quarterback. Now that Mac Jones has been that guy already, there's going to be that next guy. And I think it's going to be Mont. I think Mont's going to go two rounds higher than anybody thinks. He's definitely going to be gone by the second round. And I just wouldn't be surprised if he was gone early second or maybe even late first. I just wouldn't be shocked if a team traded up to get Kellen Mond. I think all that same logic applies, but I, I'm going to swap out Kellen Mond and tell you the people I talk to really like Davis Mills yeah, from Stanford. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Uh, all that same logic that he could go early in the second round, much higher than expected. Um, he's a little bit more of a project than Mond. I think Mond has more experience than Davis Mills, but uh, same kind of reason people like. Mac Jones is, you know, the smarts, the quick, quick, uh, quick diagnostician knows where to go with the ball. As soon as it's snapped, they like that about Davis Mills. So I could see him, you know, not 32 to the bucks. Cause I don't think they'll do what new England did and keep picking Tom Brady backups and anger him. But if the bucks traded out of 32, I could see a team moving up for a quarterback like Mills or Mon to get that fifth year option like Je- like Baltimore did a couple years ago with Lamar Jackson. That's very important to have on your quarterback, that fifth year option. That comes 32, you get one, and 33, you don't. Yep. Well, we'll see how it works out. We, it happens all the time. And and the thing is, though, I just, I, I, I don't know. All respect to JT O'Sullivan, and maybe he'll make me look, maybe he'll, he'll make me look stupid, but I just don't see it with Mond. I mean, Mond looks too erratic to me. You know, he's going to have to have some really good coaching to coach him up to, to, cause he just, he, he, I see some of his passes sometimes. He just, it just looks all over the place. Hey, maybe it's the system. Maybe it's where he went to college. I know it's not a small time, small school, but Texas A&M is not necessarily known for quarterbacks. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Johnny Menzel went there. Yeah. Look how that worked out. <laughs> all right all so right. our this was fun yes absolutely and our schedule uh says that we will be back on friday morning so we're going to have more yep. than enough time uh to re- recap the first round preview the second round we'll post it early on friday so more than enough time to check it out before uh the second round begins in the evening don't forget to guide our lads guide here 2021 go to our to order it and uh, and then we'll recap the draft, I believe, next Monday. Correct? The Monday after the draft, which is actually next Monday. Time to go do some mulch. Good for you. Uh, time for me to go to bed. <laughs> See you later, Greg. Take care, Thanks Ryan. For doing this.